And now we're going to move uh, to the person that has traveled here, I think, the furthest. Might be, yeah. Uh, uh, yes, the winner of that award. Uh, uh, and uh, Ali Hashemi, who is uh, leading um, in a really interesting care model called Glue Care Health. So, uh, Ali, please. Thanks. Good morning, everyone. By now, you're, 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 you've digested your breakfast and you're starting to come off that peak of that glucose spike. So if anyone falls asleep, I won't hold it against you. Uh, I did. <laughs> I noticed that it said Dubai after my name. I think I'm the only one whose like geographic location was referenced in the intro. <laughs> um, so my name is Ali Hashmi. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Metabolic. Uh, Metabolic is a platform that we've built. We built it in Dubai. It does a couple of things. I'm only going to talk about one of those things. Um, one is it drives a clinical platform called GlueCare.Health. It is a, a medical practice, regulated, doctors, nurses, the whole kit and caboodle, um, focused on the treatment of diabetes and prediabetes. Um, it is a hybrid model, both virtual and physical. There's a whole bunch of tech behind it, and I'll get into that. On the other side, and I'm not going to talk about it as much, we run a platform called Zone.Health, which is a medicated weight loss program talking about all the great innovations in pharmacologics. Um, it's direct to consumer for non-diabetic uh, weight loss. Okay. So the great benefit of being last, uh, not just uh, among this illustrious group, but also last day, is that I've had the privilege of listening to a lot of people much smarter than me say really great things, and my speech has largely been written for me. Lots of lessons learned. Uh, lesson number one, that there's nothing uh, an audience loves more than a good before and after photo that came from Daniel, uh, sorry, from David a few days ago. So here you go. I can't take this back. It's out there. Okay, now you've seen it. Uh, Ali, a couple years ago, you've seen it along with 65,000 other people, by far and away my most popular LinkedIn post ever. Uh, but this described my own journey. Uh, a couple of years ago, I was not in great shape. I had been in great shape younger while I was in medical school. I was actually st spent more time in the gym than I did in my books, I think. But, you know, life got in the way. Profession got in the way. I had kids that it's a joy, but sometimes they get in the way. And, you know, that slippery slope. And I got to a point where I was 90 kilos, 195 pounds-ish. I had fatty liver. I had high cholesterol. I had high uric acid. And I've got a lab in my basement, so I test myself all the time. Uh, I became pre-diabetic in the middle of opening a diabetes center, which is obviously not a good look. Um, so... <laughs> So uh, I became a patient at my own clinic and turned that guy into that guy in about four months and reversed everything. How'd that happen? I'll tell you a little bit about the journey and then we'll dive into sort of the n nitty gritty of it. Uh, the clinical experience is unified and continuous and we built it from scratch. I walked in as a patient, I registered, I got my bloods drawn immediately. We have a lab on premises. The bloods go down to the basement. I go up to the coffee shop and I break my fast. By the time I've done that, my labs are done within 30 to 40 minutes. And the results are already on the physician's screen. So I go in to see my endocrinologist. He's already got everything that he needs to talk about teed up. And we have a long and detailed conversation about all of my biomarkers and how they interact. After seeing the endo, I go and see the rest of the care team. Diabetes educator, nutritionist, dietitian, and a health coach. That health coach is key. She connects me with all of the devices that I need, all the apps that I need to download, and helps me navigate what happens the next morning when I wake up and I'm no longer at the clinic. But I'm still connected to the clinic, and I'm still connected to the entire care team, and they're connected to me. So my journey over four months, it did include Ozempic, but it also included one of these, and it was this magical curated journey of discovery through my own data and a hyper-personalized experience of learning about what caused what and what lessons I needed to learn and how I could carry that forward. So I lost 40 pounds, reversed everything, and I've kept it off so far for the last two years. Okay, so what is Glue Care? Uh, I'll skip all the sort of text, but we are a hybrid physical and virtual model. And we have a single North Star, which is to use all the great tech that every one of these conferences talk about in a synthesized and unified way to drive one thing, an outcome. And the derivative of that outcome is human behavior. So really what we are is a behavioral change engine, which is this sort of curated journey of self-discovery through your own data. 
But let's rewind, sort of big picture. Why are we more metabolically dysfunctional than we've ever been in human history? There's some fundamental truths. It's a 24 seven condition. Any of you in the audience with chronic disease, you know that. As a diabetic, it's even worse. You're gonna spend hours and hours self, self managing your access points to the healthcare system, your insurance company, you name it. Getting lab tests, seeing your endo, seeing your podiatrist, seeing your cardiologist, it, it's never ending and it's terrible. But the healthcare system treats it as if it's just an episodic thing. Now it's not a problem of lack of innovation. We've been innovating for the last century on every dimension related to healthcare. Every single dimension has gotten better, not worse, from our pharmacologics to our devices to everything in between. So. What is it a problem of? It's not a problem of genetic predisposition because our genes haven't meaningfully changed in the last 50 years, have they? Our phenotypic expression has, but then that we get back up to the point of, of behavior. And we also, as many people in the last four days have mentioned, we also have an incentive problem. Well, the healthcare system, Ken, John, and Michael all echoed the same points. The healthcare system is working exactly as it's designed to but the incentives are wrong. We also have an execution and integration problem. And that's where, you know, crazy entrepreneurs like myself come in to try to synthesize all this stuff and put it to practice. But Parisa put it really well. She said that innovation is outpacing implementation in clinical practice. And that is actually an interesting problem because we'll be having the same conversations next year and the year after in conferences similar to this. Alfred talked about the next step, even once you implement, how do you personalize that at scale and make it impact a lot of people? And Rasu's quote I loved, which is, you know, if you apply it digital to a broken process, all you're really gonna end up with is a broken digital process at the end of it. But fundamentally, we have a human problem. Imagine the last time any of you went to see your GP. Actually, you're all doctors, so you probably don't do that because you're notorious about not caring for yourself. Imagine you had seen a GP. That visit would have been 10 minutes. The GP would have spent 90 seconds looking at you, eye contact, and probably nine minutes tapping away with two fingers, struggling with the EMR, putting a bunch of nonsense information in there and not forming a human connection, not actually planting the seeds of trust and engagement that you need to engage build trust and to change. It's a human problem. Think about everything else that's happening in the room. The architectural design, the furniture selection, the wardrobe selection, there's a giant desk separating you from your physician. Your chair is at a lower level than the physician, so the physician is literally looking down on you. Right, some people are smiling, yeah. It's true, I mean, we, we perpetuate this legacy in the system that none of us ever really think about. None of this is tech, it's not rocket science, it's common sense. We just sort of took the time to think about some of these things. Ron, after a brilliant talk, ended with this thought, that it's all about the human touch. And then Nicole took it a step further and she said, well, even if we have the human touch, maybe we actually need to get better at being human. And then Paul, well, maybe that's not as relevant. <laughs> so we actually have no agency over our health. This is an agency problem, right? If I ask any of you, how did your breakfast affect your metabolic health today? You wouldn't know. And if I said, what about all your last 365 breakfasts? How has that impacted your overall metabolic health for the future? You'd have no idea. This is an agency problem. You don't have the data to affect the change that you need to affect. But how do you solve this? And more importantly, how do you earn the right to win? Earning the right to win in this context is achieving the best possible outcome at the lowest possible unit cost. And what we've tried to do is look at it as a baby would. Fresh eyes, no biases, with gleeful irreverence to what the rules are, the way the system works. And candidly, we didn't really care about making money. We just wanted to build something that worked. So we built GlueCare from scratch. We built our own center, 10,000 square foot facility. Again, a regulated entity. It's a clinic, it's a facility. It has staff, it has insurance contracts. It functions as a traditional clinic would. But it's powered by this amazing tech platform that allows our patients to experience their data on a continuous basis. We built a whole front end, back end, and everything in between to allow our patients to interact with their data. We broke down all the silos of all the data sources, all these devices. I have a tw team of 20 engineers that are constantly breaking things and hacking things and putting them together. And we create a really nice unified e data experience for our patients. 
We built a beautiful facility that doesn't look like a medical facility. And candidly, it's a lab. It's a sandbox for us to test, fail, iterate, improve. We're constantly improving. But it was important to build it. And hopefully that's the first and last one that I have to build because I don't want to be in the clinic building business. But we built it so that we could control it and that we can control everything that happens within its four walls from an incentive perspective. We're punching a little bit above our weight class in terms of some of the partnerships that we've had. So we're the first facility of any kind in the world, and this is something we're really proud of, to be accredited by ICHOM, which is the International Consortium of Health Outcome Measures, um, as a value-based care organization, which is kind of cool. Uh, we did a partnership with Nova Nordisk uh, last year. And we were the first uh, example of its kind of a fully at-risk medicated weight loss program. If our patients don't lose the weight, they get a full refund. Convincing a drug company to give money back to a patient is kind of like taking candy away from your kids after Halloween, but we managed to get that done. And the team at Nova were great. Um, but what an amazing program. It's not rocket science, not really that innovative, to be candid. You know, satisfaction or your money back is, is a thing that people do in other industries. We don't really use it that much in healthcare. So what's the punchline? And this will kind of wrap us up. It works, and it works really well. Candidly, a lot better than I thought it would work. So these are our th this is our three-month data. We're achieving over 2% reduction in A1C. In parentheses, I've put 2.4 because that's our engaged population. Your population is always a mix of people who opt out and opt in. Um, so we're achieving incredible re reductions in A1C. I'm not a fan of using A1C as a measure. I prefer time and range, but then everyone's got to be wearing a CGM, which is not financially sustainable. So we do talk about A1C. But across the board, we've reduced every single meaningful biomarker related to metabolic disease. And we've done this in three months. Is it meaningful? Let's look at it in terms of comparison on others. Now, these are our peers. Um, I call them the OGs, the version ones, the early adopter, the early innovators in the digital health space. Most of these companies don't have the fully vertically integrated platforms. They're digital. They sit on top of the healthcare system as a layer and they don't really have the ability to push and pull on the levers of cost, of incentive, of behavior. And so in the genesis of GlueCare, we thought about that, and we thought, well, if we do pull on those levers, if I do control the physicians and the pharmacists and the lab, and I'm able to control these incentives, my results should be better, and they are. So our six-month results are about twice as good as the best published results that I've seen for Livongo in about half the time, but more importantly, it's more than double the results of our best peer group in the UAE in about 1 40th of the time. So it's, it's working. Now I'll conclude with this. We spent a lot of time talking about innovation and I love these conversations. But ultimately, sometimes we lose the forest for the trees. And we're talking about the tools themselves, but not talking about how to make those tools useful and how to drive to an actual impact or an outcome. And that is a very human story. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Ali. And uh, uh, really uh, uh, an amazing setup that you've created. Um, we have a few minutes for a discussion. So maybe I'll, I'll just start with you, Ali. Uh, so uh, you, you've created this new ecosystem, uh, in essence, from scratch, which has given you the ability to sort of design it right, so to speak. Um, what are your thoughts on scaling? Yeah, so our scaling model is different from our historical model. The historical model, building everything, was, uh, you know, a, a four-year journey. And we were just quietly building, not talking about it much, letting the data speak for itself. As we go forward, like I said, I don't want to have to build a single clinic. I'm working with partners now to do that at scale. So, for example, and this is off the record. I know this is on the Internet, so it's not off the record anymore. Uh, we're, working you know. with, we're working with a, a regional government now to, to deploy 100 centers simultaneously. Well, over the next five years. So, almost blanket the country with a fresh de novo metabolic platform to care for all of its citizens. And the mission for just that project is to manage a million patients in five years. Imagine the amount of life years we're going to be able to add just in terms of healthy life extension that my colleagues have talked about earlier. Wow, uh, amazing. Um